Hello and welcome to a Books Portal presentation on four divine emanations in the Tarot. Today we're going to look directly at the Hierophant in the Crowley Harris deck, or the uh, Book of Thoth, or the Thoth deck, which has several names. And we're going to look at the Wheel of Fortune and the World as it features in many decks. Particularly we're going to be looking at the Rider Weight, or the Smith Weight, or the Coleman Smith Weight deck. We're going to be looking at those two because they're out of copyright and we will have a brief look at the Crowley ones which are in copyright so we don't want to infringe the copyright and we're going to use them as a review purpose. And let's get on with looking at the Hierophant and the animals that feature or the Karubic styles of images that feature around it as well as the animals or Karubic styles that feature around the Wheel of Fortune and the world. Before we start looking at cards we're going to have one quick look at the Tower of Marseille. Um, how often do we have to go back to Tower of Marseille and what a wonderful thing it is that we do go back to Tower of Marseille. So Tower of Marseille, this time a 1997 version based on the 1760s and earlier traditions and we're looking here at the Tower of Marseille uh, and it's by uh, Drodowski and Camnion. This tarot in particular we're going to look at the box and I'll show you some close-up images so you can see why we're looking again at these four Karubic animals that usually feature on the Wheel of Fortune and the World card. The corner figures, either on the box if you have this box, or if you're using the Wheel of Fortune or the World card in many tarot decks, the four corner figures can be seen by many as the Karubic animals or the four Christian evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. First of all we'll look at Matthew, so we'll look at the man or the angel figure as we've seen in these Karubic images around the tarot card. The man-angel figure is representative of reason or logic. Here we find, represented in this figure, the senses, the physical senses and the ability to communicate. Here we find the king or queen, uh, the monarch of earthly rulers or of divine creation. This is the element of air and it is the divine lesser feminine that we find here. In alchemy it can be described as the interactive female. Let's next look at Mark, foot and opposite, the lion. And the lion here for Mark would represent courage and bravery and maybe even force. Here we find the monarch, the king, the queen of carnivores and wild animals. The element here is fire and this is the divine greater masculine. Alchemically here we find the invulnerable male. If we now look for Luke, often opposite the lion, we'll find a bull type figure to represent Luke. And Luke is the ox or the bull and would symbolize strength and sacrifice, maybe even obedience. Here we find the monarch, the king queen of herbivores and domestic cattle. The element here is earth and here we find the divine lesser feminine. Alchemically it is the interactive female that we find here. Lastly, but in no means least, just following on, going back and above, crossing opposite, we'll find the animal that represents John. Here we find the eagle, and it is a heavenly overview, and it is the unflinching vision that we find when we look to the animal of the eagle. Here we find the monarch, the king or the queen of flying beasts or fowls. It's the element of water, the divine greater feminine, and the alchemical, invulnerable female. Just seeing the four Karubic representations as elemental forces is enough for many people. The four elements are shown on the cards numbered 10 and 21. These cards feature in sequence order as number 11 and number 22. Their roles as half and full point on the cycles make them the ideal place to show elemental forces being focused, balanced, tested and resolved. Many representations of the evangelists as four animals are linked to the four living creatures that draw the throne of the chariot of God in the divine vision of Ezekiel. The throne is referred to as the Makaba in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1. Makaba or Makaba mysticism or chariot mysticism can be applied to uncover mysteries within the tarot. In Ezekiel's vision the Hayot or Chayot, the living creatures, have bodies like men, but each of them have four heads. One has four human-like heads, another four lion-like heads, another four ox or bull-like heads, and the last four eagle-like heads. Each has four wings, and the Chayot, 
are seen as the propulsion unit of the vehicle. The driver is a human star figure, but it is an angelic being. In tarot terms, this chariot can be seen as a living elemental cube. The angels wear animal geysers to display their character, a little like god forms from other religious traditions such as those found in ancient Egypt. In Macabre mysticism or chariot mysticism, the angelic beings can be set in a hierarchical order. The seraphim or burning angels are the closest to God and they are the driving or motivating force. They are flashes of fiery energy continuously ascending and descending from heaven. Heot or Cheot, the living creatures, are second closest to God and they coordinate their four heads and the four of themselves to move and to make manifestation possible. Or Fanhim or wheels, cycles or ways, are circles within circles and make physical locomotion possible. The Ochanim are ruled by Cheot and in turn they are ruled by the Seraphim. The ruler of this hierarchy is the likeness of man, the angel on the sapphire throne. The chariot is his vehicle. The user of tarot is like the likeness of man angel on the sapphire throne. The four suits of tarot are like the Afanhim, or wheels that move on the face of the earth. The quad character and the four heads of the angels are like the four types of court cards and they are the Cheot or Cheot and they bring shape to people around us. The Seraphim are like the continually regenerating archetypes of the major arcana. The Afanim, wheels, cycles or ways, are the one to ten, the circles of the minor arcana. The Cheot or Cheot, the living creatures, are the four heads of the court cards and in their interaction and dual nature express the links between the four suits or between the four Chofanhim. The Seraphim or burning angels whose energy is continuously ascending and descending to heaven are the major arcana. When using tarot we ourselves can become the likeness of man angel or an attempt to do so and sit upon our own sapphire throne as a tarot diviner. The winged beast or elemental animals found in the corner of tarot cards have several purposes. They allow balance and order. They promise structure and rationalization. In the card of the world the harmonious balance is struck. In the wheel of fortune the balance is being tested but only in accordance with divine structure. Even if fate seems harsh in the wheel, then it is just and it is there because it needs to be there to form a new order of circumstances or perceptions to restore harmony. The Hierophant, as an adept, can be seen as being nailed to his system which in turn brings him freedom from certain restrictions. He is removed from the influence of the elemental forces shown in the beastly divine natural forms at the corner of his cards. The concepts of a naturally in tune or tuned in Hierophant may lead us to see why certain prophets sought illumination in the wilderness. By remaining aloof from the elements, a Hierophant is well placed to guide and work with them for the good of all. It may be a good moment here to look at the chariot from Crowley and Harris's Book of Thoth. In relation to Crowley's thoughts on this card, it is useful to reference his thoughts on the zodiac sign of Cancer and the magical current of Midsummer. The card of the chariot represents the sign of Cancer and it contains the essence of the longest day and shortest night of the year. In Tarot, the Hierophant can access the chariot if he comprehends the fourfold elemental forces and realizes how to actuate them in order. The nature of the angel's energies and the roles that they play are models that can explain tarot interactions. The four elemental natures of the angel, lion, ox and eagle can bring sun cycles such as years, seasons and days into the interpretation of the cards. The flow of force and the path of energy can be seen in the correct serial order, quantity and intensity by referring to the elemental balance between the four. This has been a brief guide to the four divine emanations in tarot and a quick interpretation 
of macabre, macabre mysticism or chariot mysticism, showing how the hierarchical orders of angelic beings can relate to tarot. There is so much more to explore. For now, from the Dorodowski and Camion box of the Tarot of Marseille, from the Hierophant and the Chariot of the Book of Thoth or the Crowley Harris deck, and from the World and the Wheel of Fortune, specifically here in the Rider Waite or the Smith Waite deck, but in most traditional style decks from the World and the Wheel of Fortune, that has been the four divine emanations in the Tarot. Thank you.